Hello, and welcome to Channel Zero TV with John and John. I'm John. And I'm John. And today we're going to bring you one of our very, very favorites of all time, that classic 1967 cartoon, Super President. John, do you have anything to say about Super President? Super President is a fairly typical example of Saturday morning cartoon, circa 1967. It's a superhero show. It's about a U.S. president named James Norcross, who in his prior career as an astronaut gains superpowers by passing through a cloud of cosmic dust or some damn thing. And he gains a variety of superpowers, mostly to transform his body into various tangible and intangible substances. And when he's not signing bills and pardoning Thanksgiving turkeys, he puts on the pictured costume and goes out and fights crime and evil. Okay, and we will definitely have a few things to say about this and Saturday morning cartoons at this time. Uh, we'll leave you guessing what his secret identity is, but in the meantime, we bring you Super President. <laughs> going over the sealed bids for the billion-dollar Mars space shot. Uh, why do you think there's something phony about this bid from Apex Aerospace, Mr. President? I'd rather call it something unusual, Jerry. Have you ever heard of Apex? Mm, no, no, sir. Neither have I, and neither has anybody in the space program. In other words, you want me to investigate Apex, Mr. President. And at the same time, check out that pet project of mine. Uh, what's that? Remember the hush-hush work on the midget transmitter? Wow. Uh, how does it work? Swallow it, then begin talking. And it will transmit your voice directly to me. Catch. Let's just call your investigation a dry run. Taxi, Mr. Sales. Good evening, Mr. Sales. What's this? My associate has a very nervous trigger finger. Ten hours and 4,000 miles away, Jerry's sales captors put down in a secret jungle airfield. <laughs> Welcome to Apex Aerospace, Mr. Sales. So, you've brought me 4,000 miles to show me a building. To show you what is under the building. After you, Sales. Hmm. What's this, uh, the five dollar tour? Far from it, the one billion dollar tour. <laughs> Behold, my defertilizing machine. A quick demonstration of the defertilizer for our guest. We will watch on the monitor. All right, Gozo, activate. I... I saw it, but I... But you find it hard to believe. I have invented a machine that gives me control over every growing plant on Earth. Control over the food that you eat. But to complete my project, I need the one billion dollars your government is spending on the Mars space shot. Once I have that, I can rule the world. <laughs> the president will never give you a penny. No, I think he will give considerably more. Something in the neighborhood of 100 billion pennies. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, anybody mind if I take my pill? We're holding him for ransom, and all he's worried about is his pill. Well, you've convinced me, Professor DeCordo. You're a genius, choosing a place in the Andean jungles for a hideout. It's Jerry, talking to DeCordo. Who would ever think of looking for me or for Apex Aerospace in the middle of this wilderness? Good boy, Jerry. Hang on, I'm on my way. You can't go through with this, Decordo. 
You can't starve innocent people. Professor, look, somebody's in the building up above. Turn on the monitor. The spy must be eliminated. Super President. Activate the laser beam. Laser beams. I must change my molecular structure to ozone. The laser beams don't affect him, Professor. Then use the reactive pressurizer. Nothing can withstand that. The walls are closing in on me. I must change to steel if I'm to hold those walls back. up, Decordo. Your evil plans are finished. What's finished is you. The disintegrator has no effect. Ah, the flamethrower. You can't resist fire. I must change to granite. The flame gun is useless. But this won't be. Mercy! Mercy! A strange word to hear from your lips, Professor DeCordo. Well, Mr. President, uh, everything's wrapped up, except for one minor detail. What's that, Jerry? Uh, the midget transmitter. It's still inside me. Uh, what happens now, a stomach pump? <laughs> Don't worry, Jerry. Within one hour after you swallowed it, your midget transmitter pill dissolved. Of course, if you'd rather be on the safe side. Oh, 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 oh no, sir. Uh, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> well, it's pretty much an open and shut case for Super President. Yeah, I, 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 I wish to vigorously protest the stereotypical typical portrayal of green-skinned people with long black ponytails. As somebody who has been green at various times of his life, and in another week or so, I'm going to have a magnificent ponytail of my own, I take ex exception. Yeah, although I will have to say the sort of Asiatic features, that is something of the villain. That's not something we are likely to see in contemporary cartoons. Nope, nope, but that's, that's a big part of this sort of era in Saturday morning television. This is one of those cartoons that, like Action for Children's Television really sharpened their claws on. Although they did make the interesting point that it's probably not a good idea to depict the uh, chief executive of any nation as a being with like near godlike superpowers. That's a good point, actually. I've, I've often advocated that myself during <laughs> uh, presidential campaigns. But I, I would say this was also an era when... I mean, you know, let's face it, there are eight superpowers. So in contemporary times, how do we differentiate, you know, one super strong hero from another? We do this with the preposterous backstories. Uh, whereas I would say in this era, which is, which as you notice, the era that you and I grew up watching Saturday morning cartoons, you differentiate them through sort of preposterous situations, right? What could be more ludicrous than the president of the United States having a sort of president cave uh, where he keeps his rocket car, you know, <laughs> underneath the White House. I mean, you know, this is also a period of, of Mitor. Remember Mitor who fought crime in the Stone Age? Yeah, we definitely needed to devote an episode to Mitor. The thing I find hilarious is, is that, like, literally it's a government of two people. Here's the president and chief of staff, valet, chauffeur. Fourthly assistant, comic relief, right? It's not so much a, a government. It's more like a startup. But we've watched a bunch of these over the years. As you know, we've, we've screened these on various occasions. And, uh, right. and and they're all kind of like this. The The only sort of indication that anything presidential is going on is he's in the White House, and he's talking with his assistant there, you know, but then he sort of, of rockets off to fight space aliens or robots, or in this case, uh, sort of, of 
mad scientists. So it's not like they actually have fun with the conceit of the president of the United States also being a superhero. No, no, not at all. This, uh, this, by the way, was from uh, the DePatty Freelang Studios, which was a partnership between Dave DePatty, who was MGM's animation coordinator for a lot of years, and Fritz Freelang, who was a storied animator at Warner Brothers, who, who directed a lot of like sort of the classic Looney Tunes. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 So they got into business together and just started grinding stuff out for Saturday morning. And their big moneymaker was the Pink, the Pink Panther. You know, which had some sort of style to it. And, and oh, God, yeah. certainly some some wit. I guess that's one thing that surprised me is I know, you know, you do certain things to pay the bills, but it seems you are get stuck or come up with a property like Super President. Boy, you know, it's like you could really kind of run with that. I mean, that's just full of potential. Well, certainly satiric potential. <laughs> so like, I mean, this was running when 1967. So this is the, you know, sort of decline of the Johnson administration. I mean, right. there just seems to be no actual political context for this all. Right. It's like they literally pulled this name out of a hat. You know, there's an interview out there somewhere with either DePatty or Freeling. I forget who it was, but they said to an interviewer right in like 67, 68, when, you know, all these sort of superhero cartoons were just blanketing all of Saturday morning television. They said sort of very cynically, you know, Superman could be animated on toilet paper and it would still get broadcast on Saturday morning. You know, you know, like you say, pull out, you know, super from bucket A and president from bucket B. And that's this year's show. Right. It's, it's like literally they came up came up with this concept by throwing a dart at the board. I hope we're not being too cynical because as you, I hope you're, you could tell, we truly, truly love the show. And this was a, been a big part of Channel Zero for years. And we hope you've enjoyed it. And we hope you'll join us uh, next time on Channel Zero TV.